Before we get to the golf course this week, I need to do a little bit of research. It seems I need to find a book by a man named Darwin. Not Charles, but his grandson Bernard, who was an elite amateur golfer, former captain of the RNA, and a golfing journalist that would write many books about the sport he loved, but there was maybe one golf course he loved more than others. Now, as you can see, we are staying at some incredible accommodation this week in the most dramatic location. But first, we need to get to the golf course that Darwin loves so much. It's an hour's drive, so let's hit the road and see what all this fuss is about. This week's episode comes to you from my homeland of Wales. I'm staying in Blyneth for Stiniog, and that one hour drive takes me through Snowdonia National Park and some of the most breathtaking scenery you will see anywhere in the world. episodes have been filmed in brutal conditions so it was nice the sun made an appearance but I didn't manage to escape the strong breeze that seems to be following me right now. I've played here a number of times over the years, but there have been some major changes in recent months. More bunkers, sand scrapes and new tea boxes. The question is, would Darwin approve? Well, I certainly hope so, because the new tea boxes carry his name. Just made our way to the fourth tee and the sun has come out. It's blowing as ever, that's what you'd expect from this channel. But what a tee box this is, as have been the first three, to be honest with you. We're playing slightly forward of those Darwin tees that we'll talk about later on in the video, but uh, it's a nice backdrop and quite inviting. It's 106 to centre, extremely downwind, and uh, it's not easy. It's definitely easier off the tee with the wind in your favour, but not as easy to play these shorter shots. Oh, do you know what? I'm quite happy with that. A little bit of control, it's kind of, it's still running on a tad. I spoke with Nigel for a quick chat about the recent improvements at Abu Dhabi. Yeah, so what we've basically done here, we've had an um, appraisal of the course and trying to improve its visual appearance. So when people stand on the tee, the, the, the tee shot is a bit more evident. There's a bit more of a striking visual appearance of the golf course, a bit more definition. Brought in a new series of bunkers. There's 13 new bunkers. So in our, in our um, aim to still maintain to be a, a championship course, we've reintroduced a series of nine Darwin tees. So we haven't got a Darwin tee on every hole, but the idea is, again, to change the, the visual for the shot, change the whole dynamics of the hole, and make it a, a championship course that golfers of a range of ability can play and are able to play, but in doing so, they feel they've got a real, real challenge. Courses generally are, are going longer with technology, 
because ultimately we're going to get all the courses, all the five T block options rank, uh, course rated for men and ladies. So we're now moving to what is a, a more of a um, ability based T structure than a, a gender based. And it's all to give people of all abilities um, the ability to enjoy playing the course of their choice. The fourth hole has really got everything. It's got new Darwin tea. It's got plenty of work done on bunkers. Revetted bunkers look superb. The greens and the aprons all look immaculate as well. So four holes in and all the work that they've done here at uh, Abu Dhabi, which is a lot, I can already see within four holes. The question is, can we uh, make good of the greens and get a bit of a birdie? Roll out, roll out, roll out. Oh, <laughs> yes, the greens are good, I told you. A huge thank you to PXG for sponsoring our Off The Beaten Track series. And make sure you go and check out the new PXG Black Ops Driver Challenge. Details can be found in the footer below and also over on my Instagram account. Abu Dhabi is a true test of golf and although the lengthening of this course might appeal to some elite golfers, the introduction of those varied tee options based on ability is something that I very much applaud. My fifth tee is always a decent stop off because you've just got a little bit of protection and uh, I just want to ask you a bit of a question that might be a bit of help really. Darwin described this course as the one is soul of the best. I'm just trying to think of what mine does but I'd be more interested in what yours is and uh, if you can list below any courses that are your particular favourite and whether or not you'd like to see them featured in our off the beaten track series because I'm always looking for sort of somewhere else to go so yeah I'd, I'd like to know I think for me the first thing that comes to mind is possibly Presswick as uh, I've got a bit of a soft spot for I'll also tell you I'm testing out a new flask today because uh, I'm sick of me coffee being cold by the time I get to have a first sip so uh, let's have a see it's, it's thumbs up all the way around today Abu Dhabi's been fantastic and I've got hot coffee. This was made about five hours ago. Right, let's have a look at the fifth. It does check all the boxes to qualify as classic links. The terrain, the dunes, Revetted bunkers, sand scrapes, railway lines, and a nine out, nine in layout. Abu Dhabi is the epitome of links and should be on every golfer's to do list. So, last week I mentioned to you that I was going to start having lessons, which I have, but I also just wondered what kind of uh, impact age has in terms of limitations and whether that be from a physical perspective so like losing club head speed or just the ability to retrain whether that be the mind or the body whichever one you think has the biggest impact when you're doing something for so long in a certain way how difficult is it going to be to change because I know I've got a really kind of quirky swing and uh, the change we've made so far uh, more about working with what I've got except in the club head speed thing I'm not looking to hit this ball further I'm just looking to get a little bit more consistent so really kind of eradicate that uh, move at the top of my swing but the question is that I'm asking myself and suppose asking you is you know how difficult or how much more difficult does it become the older you get because I think it's a thing to be honest with you what I am liking is this uh, I've been hitting forward off the tee and uh I'll be honest with you, I think I've been swinging it quite well, however, to suggest that before the camera goes on is maybe a bit dangerous, or whilst the camera's on, is a bit dangerous. Nah. That's decent, I'm hitting the ball good, you know. We're doing alright Lou so far.
great fear is that we've just played eight holes, very much down breeze, and at some point we've got to turn round because this is very much a nine out, nine in type of course, which means every hole on the back nine is going to be into a fair old howler. What am I, I'm finding myself drawn more and more to benches on uh, golf courses. I'm not sure that's not a sign of age as well, but uh, I can say we've got a little bit of protection yet again because it is howling and we're about to face, uh, well, this is number nine at the moment and we'll find our way in. The other thing I'm contemplating is how much time I need to spend on my short game. So with uh, an inevitable loss in distance uh, as you get older, what I've noticed is I've played against a number of golfers over the years who, uh, when they were maybe 10, 15, 20 years older than me, I used to knock the ball maybe 50 yards past them off the tee and then all of a sudden walk off at the end of the game losing four and three, five and four and just wondering how did that happen. Well, in the main, it's because they've adapted to a very razor sharp short game and that can, you know, there's plenty of ways to score playing golf and it's not all about distance so I think I need to practice as well just making sure that uh, short game is all in order but uh, I can report more good news uh, another hour or so further in and the coffee is still very hot so we play the ninth which is a super little par three and then unfortunately we're going that way and that means uh, yeah, we're going back into that room. Now Hannah is back on the camera this week so make your choice and comment down below for photo of the week. If anyone's played Abu Dhabi, you'll always remember the 12th hole. It depends uh, how long ago you played it, which green you'll remember. Because unfortunately, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago now, they had a real unfortunate situation where the seawall collapsed and all the green was basically washed away. So a major rebuild to the green that we're playing now. From this tee box, it's just 120 odd yards. I'll be playing a seven iron into uh, what is obviously an elevated green. And we'll see if we can get somewhere near because the wind is howling straight in. I could be even needing one club more. What oh, that wind's got it. Sit down, ball. Sit down. That was a really decent effort, you know, but I don't know whether you've seen it at the top of its ball flight. It, re it rose much higher than I would have expected to and it just drifted over and hopefully we just started, stayed this side of the sleepers and I think we'll be pin high but that wind is so so strong bit more, bit more oh it's quite nice it was pin high like I said but just drifted towards the sleepers I'm not even sure I've had a rebound back off it but uh, why it's such a great golf hole is that obviously you glance over that side and pretty much everybody uh, takes a walk up to this high vantage point and has a look at what is an absolutely stunning beach at Abu Dhabi. It's a bit nicer when the sun's shining but we'll take it. Go. 
Yeah, that's okay. I've almost found myself. I'll say playing better into the breeze, but being a bit more committed with the shots. When you're playing down breeze on the wedge shots in, you're sort of dollying them up to, to land short and, and release a little bit. When you're playing into the wind, you're looking for a lot more solid striking contact, so it seems to be a bit more positive. As the wind started to chill, it was time to get back to our rather unusual accommodation. Tucked away in amongst Snowden's mountains, it was time to light a fire, get some warm food and start planning for tomorrow's adventure. <laughs> 